This is the HP XW4300 Workstation. This is another one of those desktops that I picked up at a garage sale for five bucks. And when I took it home and had a closer look at it, I was very surprised and in a good way. Hello guys, and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this all out workstation computer from 2005. This is not just your typical daily driver. And when I take a look at the hardware in just a couple minutes, you will understand why. So I want to start off with talking about this system's hardware because that's probably the most interesting aspect of this computer. So it appears that it is equipped with some sort of Pentium 4 processor. I don't know the exact model at the moment. We will find that out when we actually turn this thing on, boot up into the BIOS, and then eventually boot up into an operating system. My guess is that it's some sort of uh, Pentium for hyper-threaded Prescott running at around 3 gigahertz. For a hard drive, this thing actually still has its hard drive in it. The previous owner left it in here. I'm not sure if there's anything on it. Uh, we will check that out in just a sec when I turn this thing on. Uh, but this thing is rocking a Seagate Barracuda 250 gigabyte 7200 RPM SATA hard drive. For a video card, we have a NVIDIA Quadro FX540. Now, by today's standard, this is uh, nowhere near a beefy card. Actually, back in 2005, this thing wasn't really the bee's knees either. But if you just want to get some basic 3D modeling done, maybe edit some video back in 2005, uh, this card could do just that. So card specs, I believe, uh, I went ahead and looked them up and hopefully these specifications are correct. Our GPU core clock is around 300 megahertz. Uh, this thing's rocking 128 megabytes of GDDR3 RAM running at 500 megahertz, uh, TDP of 25 watts. According to techpowerup.com, the launch price was 299 US dollars. This board is equipped with a ton of I.O. We have three PCI slots, one PCI Express X16 slot, one PCI Express X8 slot, and one PCI Express X1 slot. We have four SATA ports, I believe uh, those would be SATA revision 2, four slots for RAM, and speaking of RAM, the system did ship with eight gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. Unfortunately, there's only a gigabyte of DDR2 RAM in the system right now because I took the rest and uh, shuffled them around some of my servers. Um, so yeah, this is a smaller channel and I don't have a super big budget to work with, so I take all the parts I can get. And the system's been sitting here for a year. It was you know, bound to be parted out. So I've taken some of the RAM already and put it to good use in the back where the servers are, um, but we still have a gig in here to actually turn the system on and test it out. Supporting everything is a 460 watt Delta Electronics power supply. So uh, pretty decent power supply in this system. Of course, on the front, you can see that we also have a DVD drive inside this computer. As far as IO on the back is concerned, you're going to find two PS2 ports, one for keyboard and one for mouse, a serial port, parallel ports, uh, six USB 2.0 ports, Ethernet port, and of course, all of your audio jacks on the front. And uh, this is kind of interesting, but it looks like there's a cutout for Firewire, but this particular model was not equipped with Firewire. So on the front, you will see that the system has two USB 2.0 ports and two audio jacks, one for headphone and one for a microphone. Okay, so it's now that time in the video. We are going to try to power this thing up. So I have it hooked up to my uh, Dell monitor right here. Just a little test monitor uh, via VGA. Everything is hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and hit the power button in three, two, one. Okay, let's see if we can get into the BIOS. Maybe keyboard. Ah. <laughs> I was hit, I was hitting too much. Oh, what is it? Uh, F10. F10 is set up. Did I make it? Did I make it? 
I think I did. Yes, I made into the setup. Okay, so here's some additional system specs. Uh, it doesn't tell us the CPU model. I will find that out in Linux. I can just use a uh, LSHW command and it should bring that up. Uh, but it is a Pentium 4 running at 3.4 gigahertz. Uh, everything else uh, is already stuff that I uh, addressed in previous clips, we have one gigabyte of DDR2 RAM, and really there's nothing else here that would be of interest to us. So it appears there is an operating system on this computer. Um, someone barged in right as I was recording, and I had to tell them to leave very quickly. But anyway, it appears that uh, Windows 7, I think that's says Windows 7, Windows 7 is installed on this computer. So someone was using this uh, up till somewhat recently. Uh, they took the liberty of uh, taking Windows XP off this and installing Windows 7 because the system originally shipped with a 64-bit version of Windows XP. And this is using a traditional 7200 RPM hard drive and I'm sure someone has a ton of stuff uh, installed on this so it might take a while to boot up. Uh, I'm gonna cut it here and I will uh, see you guys in just a couple minutes when hopefully this thing boots up into either a lock screen or even better, the Windows desktop. There is a working Windows 7 install on this machine, but it's pretty bogged down. For some reason, the previous owner installed two antivirus programs, Symantec and something else. I, I don't even know what the other one is. Um, but as you can see, things are very, very slow right now. You also gotta take into consideration that there is currently only one gigabyte of DDR3, or DDR2 uh, RAM inside this machine. So yeah, things are very, um, very slow. I was trying to get rid of Symantec and of course, you know, that's a whole nother uh, uh, fun journey in itself. So I've just given up. Um, but I do want to show you guys something interesting. So it looks like someone, uh, sadly, was actually trying to use this as a gaming PC. And maybe this might be alright for some very, uh, very old games. I mean, something like Portal. Uh, which isn't really a very, very old game, but uh, Portal uh, would probably run alright on this machine, but if you're trying to play modern titles, I'm I'm not familiar with Dota. Uh, I know what it is, I just, I've just never played it before, and I don't know uh, the system resource limitations. Um, you're probably not going to get a, a great frame rate or a great experience. Yeah, we have this other thing over here called System Shield, so... Um, Someone uh, installed a couple like antivirus things on this machine and it just makes it so slow. Uh, they probably should not have done this. Yeah, but I'm going to wipe windows. I might go into a uh, device manager real quick um, just to check something out. But besides that, I'm going to wipe, oh my goodness, I'm going to wipe this windows install and uh, quickly boot into uh, Ubuntu Linux. I tried to install Ubuntu 16.04 and I ran into an issue. It said it wasn't able to install a Grub. Uh, I tried to install it twice and then I thought, why am I even doing this? You know, I'm just trying to give a quick demo. I really don't need to install Ubuntu to the hard drive. Uh, really just wanted to boot into here and try some stuff out. So I opened up terminal, ran the uh, lshw command as root. Um, and it still didn't give me the exact model of our Pentium 4 processor. It just said Pentium 4 CPU at 3.4 gigahertz. So I actually used this machine to do some research. So I went online, found the data sheet for the HP XW4300. And as you can see, our model, ooh, I'm just trying to highlight that there. Our model is using the Intel Pentium 4 650 with hyperthreading. And yes, I was correct. That is a Prescott processor. So you can see all of our processor specifications right here uh, with our nice uh, 84 watt TDP figure. Um, I was thinking about, well actually some people suggested using this machine as a server because I think I uh, kind of teased it a couple times in some of my previous videos and I would not use this as a server. You know, it's, it's pretty inefficient. Um, it's not really good as a 24-7 uh, machine. I mean, it would, it would definitely... Uh, work as a server. It would probably run 24-7 without issues, but it's just consuming too much power. Uh, I have some more efficient Core 2 dual machines in the back, so I'm going to stick with those. But it is a pretty decent daily driver. As you guys saw, I was doing some research on this. I mean, I can cycle between tabs, open new tabs, browse the web just fine. And keep in mind, this is just with 
the live installation. This is running off a USB flash drive and with all the stock drivers. Um, so performance is very, very, very impressive at this point. I mean, look at the scrolling. Scrolling's uh, nice and smooth for the most part. It's trying to uh, load up uh, the next page and you can see it hangs uh, every once in a while. Uh, but if I open up another window and kind of just to minimize it and drag it around here, just fine. Uh, not really too much tearing. And if I move over here, We'll play a video. I have this set to uh, 720p at 60 frames per second. Uh, 720p video playback is decent. Um, it does hang here and there. And then 420p video playback is flawless. I'm sure if we could get our hands on a, a proprietary video driver for this, things might be a tad bit better. Though I'm not sure... Um, if there are any proprietary video drivers for this particular card on Linux, um, I haven't looked into that yet. Um, so that'd be interesting to actually test. Um, I'm going to pop open a couple more applications and then really uh, call it a day for this video. I'm um, not going to, you know, run any benchmarks, anything super serious on this system uh, at the moment. So you can see our calculator application popped open uh, pretty much instantly right there. We'll open up an instance of file manager, open up an instance of A by Word. So you can clearly see that this is uh, definitely a decent little office machine. Haven't run into any hiccups yet. And with a gig of RAM installed, it's actually handling things pretty darn well. I mean, look at the multitasking. We've got a couple tabs opened in Firefox. We got a terminal here, a calculator, file manager, Word document. Um, so this is an example of your day-to-day -day load. So that's going to be about it for this video, guys. And I know some people are going to complain about the fact that I use Linux. I've been over this many, many times. I have nothing against Windows. I use Windows on my editing rig and it's installed on my main laptop. But for situations like this, um, I do a lot of videos centered around bringing older PCs back to life. And when I do that, I like to use Linux, Linux distributions because they're light and they are still supported, unlike Windows XP, which is no longer supported anymore. It's an outdated operating system. Some people are going to recommend that I use that. I have nothing against Windows XP, but if I'm refurbishing a system and I'm going to actually give it to someone, I don't want to hand them an old, outdated, unsupporting, un unsupported, vulnerable operating system. That's not something I want to do. Um, so I choose to use Linux. Sure, I could use something like Windows 7 uh, or Windows 10, but then I got to pay for the license fee. Uh, and for most situations, I know Linux gets along um, just fine. So that's why I choose to use Linux in videos like this. And if you have a problem with that, that's perfectly fine. Everyone has their own opinions. You're, you're entitled to your own opinion. Um, but that's just my expl explanation for why I use Linux on these older machines. Once again, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. I'm going to slow down because I'm starting to talk a little bit too fast. Also, please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links, both of which can be found down in the description. You can also support me by checking out my Patreon. That link will be in the description as well. And of course, don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.